the saga, the series I'm talking about is Rocky, the Rocky franchise. Eight films deep, one more makes nine, when Creed three decides to drop nine entries, neck and neck compete with Star Wars, I'd easily give that to Rocky. Even though, yes, we had Rocky V, which was, depending on what day you ask me, if I just watched it recently or not, or what stage of my life you might have asked me, it might have ranged, Rocky V, I mean, it might have ranged from bad to meh. I don't know so much. But right now, the focus is on today solely, Rocky IV, which yesterday, of all days, November 27th, Rocky IV turned 20, no, sorry, 20, turned 35 years old, as old as I am this year, as old as I turned. Well, my birthday was robbed for me, so, of course, what do I know anymore about celebrating my born day? But now Rocky, of all things, Rocky IV, the fourth one of it, had its own birthday. 35 years as old as I am. Now, I'm older by a couple of months, but still, that's the bigger accomplishment. The, the one people probably went to and ran to more. And it's all right. I got no shame in that. I'll, I'll admit defeat to a, an epic-ass movie compared to me just a... I don't know, a loud, overly baritone podcaster. I'm trying to be more than that eventually in life at 35 years old, but at 35 years of being a lord as a classic film, as Rocky IV is, I have to take the L on that one. I have to bite the dust, per se. I'm not dying, but close enough compared to Rocky. But Rocky IV, I mean, listen, again, there's five. Rocky V, which wasn't, again, to eh, to bad, depending I mean, funny enough with five, I remember growing up here in the tri-state area in New York City, of course, there was a channel called Channel 11, simply referred to it as Channel 11 before. Now, now it goes by PIX or WPIX or whatever the fuck they want to call it. I just remember it's a channel they used to have cartoons in the afternoon that wasn't Fox 5 uh, during the week. But that's back in the 90s, of course, when they was at when they had like Spider-Man and Batman and Dark and Duck and then Gargoyles, which I didn't like too because people said it sounded like a gargoyle. So I always had an agenda against that cartoon period. And I won't watch it now, even if I even if I got Disney Plus. I don't even know why I'm subscribed to it anymore. But point is, Pix 11, let's just call it that, Channel 11, used to always do this thing on Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoons where they would show the same batch of, let's say... 10 to 15 movies on rotation, switching on and off between each and every one of them. When they assumed that the people who had no lives back then on Saturday and or Sunday afternoons, I'll be honest, I was watching wrestling on Saturday mornings along with the cartoons and trying to see what else was on TV so I wouldn't have to go outside. But then when I was young enough, my mom would force me outside to go to other kids' houses so she can try to learn English from their mothers, you know, trying to be sneaky like that. Or otherwise, trying to make friends, you know, because my mom has a hard time doing that because she's annoying enough to me, so let alone a complete stranger as well. But there was that, and then there was Sundays. Sundays is supposed to be family time and a family day, you know, because, you know, dad worked so hard during the week, six days straight, and then the seventh day, you know, when God said, you know, take a rest or take a knee like Kaepernick, you're supposed to take the family out and just do nothing, literally, or at least not work. But then my dad would always have the excuse of, oh, I got to go to work because I couldn't uh, figure out how to distribute myself properly to be here and there during the week. So now I need to work Sunday to make things happen, to make ends meet. That'd be the excuse. That would make sense. But not in this case. It was a lie. It was a sham. It was all under a thinly covered veil. The lie he tried to like make us think we were that stupid enough to believe but we weren't at least my mom wasn't that dumb she caught on eventually then my dad had a whole family on the side which he made ends meet for gladly for them but then come back to us sobbing and crying on sunday when it came time to pay the phone bill the cable bill put food on the table food for the week etc etc expenses pile up it's like oh i have no money i didn't work this week i barely worked it didn't i tell you that i'm sorry i might have forgot that part or you know i was too drunk or, you know because they made me drink and uh, or whatever whatever of course same old excuse so then sundays was always reduced to me and my mom my mom mostly cooking to like keep herself busy i think or just to master the craft so god bless her 
she was doing her thing. Me mostly on Sundays was spent TV and if rare occasion I got to play games, I played my games. But my mom was like, you're gonna turn into enough of a zombie. You're already dumb as is. So if I let you play games throughout the weekend, your, your brain's gonna turn to mush. So no games on the weekend. Barely during the week, if anything, in the afternoon. So I only got to watch TV. Thank God we had cable. Oddly enough, because my dad insisted on coming home after getting drunk and eating anywhere else but home, like 11, 12 at night, and he'd have to have something to watch on cable, which mostly, and oddly enough, it was the illegal cable boxes from back when, so it had all the channels, all, what, 70, 80 of them, but more importantly for my dad, because he needed that, as a hard-working man, as he was, <laughs> he had to have all the channels, meaning he had to have the porno channels too. So when I stumbled upon that, when puberty started hitting and I started getting curious about my body and checking out other bodies, how they work too, illegal cable became my go-to as far as what to check out and what to learn as far as the female anatomy is concerned. And I did. I learned about very hairy people from the mid to not so mid later 90s because porn back then, at least what was on the Spice channel or the Adult channel or that really odd night shift to the Playboy channel, I think from like 8 o'clock at night to like 4 in the morning, which I, I'd never be able to catch anyway because I was never alone to watch myself. Everybody had big old bushes, bright red hair, bleach blonde hair, which they can't even pass it off as blondes. And it looked all wrong, or the tits were huge and fake, where they looked like watermelons underneath the skin, just sewed back in and, you know, boob job done. Or extremely flat asses, which isn't the case now, thank God, but there's so much, it's like music. There's so much music out there from everybody you can imagine, everybody you could think of, who knows who's dropping when, surprisingly, randomly. If ever again, because of the state of the music industry too, porn like that, it's been like that right now. There's so many of so many sizes, shapes, colors, varieties, ethnicities, uh, gender identities, you know, uh, morbid intricacies and all that shit too, which I don't know who the fuck to look at no more, who to follow. This is oddly enough why me, compared to other guys who like, I'll admit, I watch porn, definitely, I, I always have, I'm like, what, I, I'm confessing to like, what, eight, seven, nine years old, whatever, I started watching porn, because I stumbled upon it on the illegal cable box, I never knew names, I was never good with names, I'm not good with names, period, so, for me to have to learn, or take on the task of learning the porn star's name to remember who to fucking look up, as far as when it's time for, you know, naughty time, or demon time after midnight, according to the kids today, I don't know who to look for because I can't remember no names. I can remember two names. That's it. The, and it's not even so much the two women that stood out to me, but more likely the two women in porn that kind of had the easy enough names for me to remember. So then I know to go to them immediately and it's kind of become habit. I go to them only exclusively per se. But okay, that's porn. I forgot the point of what I was even saying anymore. But yeah, point being is that okay, the focus today is Rocky 4. Rocky 5 was a whole thing on Channel 11. Basically, it was always on. Every three weeks or so, Rocky 5 was on. It was there for you to watch. You know, click the channel on the Channel 11. It's there. Some part of it, and I'd probably just stick around and watch. I never know why I gave in to it every time as I did. But Rocky 5, I can't co-sign as being or even endorse it as a good movie. It's the weaker of all the Rocky entries of the Rocky franchise series or whatever. Four is the focus today. He fights the Russian. Creed dies. You know, spoiler alert, 35 years later, if you still haven't fucking watched it. You know, you got a watch list of Q is sure, as I do, of all these shows and movies you haven't gotten to yet. But it's there. 35 years later, no surprise, hopefully you, the black man dies first. Like it was a horror movie. It, and you know what? Rocky IV, if you think about it, had all the makings of a potentially a horror movie, of how horrifically bad it could have been. I'll point out some things as far as what did 
end up being bad about the film, but otherwise I'd give it an overall good rating. Like, uh, I'd even dare to say between good and great. That's where you got to put Rocky Four. Surprisingly enough, even though it came out during a time potentially of Cold War amidst, you know, tense relationships between ourselves and the Soviet Union back when now, like 19, 20 different countries that used to be under that whole umbrella of whatever the Soviet Union used to be. It had the makings of a, of a potentially bad film. Of course, because the guy Rocky's facing in the flick is like two times the size. And this is the first thing that bugs me about the movie. I had to watch it recently again because, as I mentioned, and hopefully you don't forget and acknowledge too, even though we're a day late. Yesterday, the 27th, November, was the 35th anniversary of Rocky IV of its release. Uh, fun fact, actually, when I did my research, is that the only Rocky movies to not be released in the month of November was Rocky II, which I believe was... No, sorry, not Rocky II, Rocky V. The... Wait, no. I lost count. Hold on. I keep thinking Korean and I get my, my shit, my Rockies mixed up. Sorry. Uh, I believe Rocky II was like May... And I think three was like a June or something like that in the summer. Every other entry into the Rocky series was a November release. So oddly enough, we just passed the 30th year anniversary of Rocky V, actually, this same month, November 2020. And also Creed, the first Creed with Michael B. Jordan, turned five years old this month, November 2020, of course. Five years old. That's good. Great feat right there. My first big thing issue with Rocky 4 would definitely be that if they build up Drago Dolph Lundgren his legit name real name if they build him up to be this killer this machine alluding to the one that killed again spoilers if you've never seen it before killed Rocky's best friend the black dude the cooler of the two Apollo Creed. I mean, name alone, he's much cooler. Let's give him that. He kills him off within what? It was two rounds, I think. He, he practically bodies him in the first round. He's a bloody mess, all that shit too. He's like all, you know, pretty much a sack of meat. He, he looks like, uh, what do you call it? Hamburger meat in the face, pretty much. Second round, starts hitting him so hard and has that one final knockout, lethal, fatal blow to Creed that he dies, or at least starts convulsing in the ring because no one pays attention, he eventually dies. He just gives in to like the internal damage and whatever the machine did, the Russian bear machine did. And of course the infamous uttered, if he dies, he dies, he doesn't care, poorly delivered by Adolf Lundgren's, but of course he's very early on in his career, so to expect him to be Oscar-worthy caliber of like a Pacino, he dies, he dies. Can't expect that from him. But that bothered me because it was one and a half rounds going toe to toe with Creed, which was, who was physically bigger, stronger, more agile, much more skilled than Rocky ever was. We only love Rocky so much because he has his undying nature of never giving up, never backing down, never quitting, and the heart of a, a lion, a bear, a tiger mix combined. It's humongous and disproportionately. Really faceted and functional. That's why we love Rocky so much. But you got Creed who died in a round and a half. Meanwhile, at the very end of the movie, Rocky's able to last 15 full rounds with this same killing machine who knocked this much stronger, much more qualified, and much better champion of a man within a round and a half. So I didn't get that part too much. Unless Rocky is low-key mixed, blood-infused, transfused with, like, Wolverine or something. Animadium, because he does allude to that at one point. Fucking uh, Drago says uh, he's got, like, a head of steel or something, or iron or whatever. That could be a possibility, but then that seems too stupid to even believe in. But, okay, there's that. That's, that's my first issue. My second, not so much issue, but maybe cause of confusion would be, is Rocky Four 
a Christmas film because there's always been that debate, that little argument that goes on between fans of the Die Hard series. Uh, I think it's number one where everything happens on the Christmas day itself. So people say, well, it counts as a Christmas film because everything's happened on Christmas day. And then some people say no, because there's no alluding to Christmas besides it just happens to be Christmas day when all this shit's going on. And Bruce Willis is like killing half a building worth of, worth of people and bad guys and such are somehow surviving a whole building falling on him and like coming out with nothing more than just like a scratch and like maybe one less strand of air than he did already. This is when he had air, I believe. A very little left, but still, you know, I can relate. But uh, I'm of the people that say it technically counts because it happens on Christmas Day. Christmas is referenced. It's not even alluded to, it's referenced, it's Christmas. It's all done on Christmas. Santa might as well be, you know, gift sacking you, coming down the chimney wherever, or at least show whatever the fuck they did for that, for, for Christmas. So it counts, I think. It, it, I think it goes in there. It's not like Miracle on 34th Street or like How the Grinch Stole Christmas because it doesn't have Christmas in the title. It's not alluding to it too, but it, it is Christmas heavy. And the theme is there too anyways. And I think it snows even, so it counts. Fuck it, just throw it in there. Rocky IV, I think, needs to be thrown in there too. Or it might start a new argument for the sake of because the fight itself between him and Drago happens on Christmas Day in, of all places, the Soviet Union, Russia, whatever you want to call it. There's snow beyond what your eyes can imagine and or literally see. So you're literally surrounded by the whites, which makes up the holiday and or the season and holiday snow for Christmas. So you can't escape it. Paulie has a scene where he trips. He's, he's trying to stumble his way out of snow. Goddamn, whatever he says. Rocky runs, trains, embraces lives have has snow on his beard by the time he's done ready with his training to take on drago in the fight the fight happens on christmas adrian goes out there to russia to meet up with him to celebrate i guess christmas uh i, I wonder if they had sex because there's always that myth of the boxers shouldn't have sex before about before but because it weakens the legs, it gives them spaghetti legs that they can't go in like full raging bull testosterone like heavy to just like take heads off. But then again, if you think about the mindset of Rocky, and by the way, I think Rocky IV is a Christmas movie with that argument being made. The climax does take place on Christmas Day and it's a fight and it's snow. Yeah, all the elements of it, it counts. I'm going to mark it as it counts as a Christmas movie unofficially, even though it was released on Thanksgiving 35 years ago. But still, here and there we can trade off. I wonder if Adrian made him have sex because Adrian looks like Adrian was all innocent and like, all, <laughs> you know, whatever. Rocky had to drag out whatever personality she had out of her. And then by the time... You know, Rocky Three came around. She got annoying. And I wouldn't say she was ugly. I wouldn't say she was great looking. I'd say she's like strong mid in between. She'd, she'd be a, a, a nice delicacy for some, for others. Like, eh, too bland, too plain. What's Rocky even doing with her, et cetera, et cetera. Charming enough, I, I'd say she was attractive, at least. You know, not like, oh, my God, a baddie. Or if, like, she had Instagram back then. She's definitely got like at most 50,000 followers like she's not getting a lot of likes even if she like throws on the thong and like a, a Spaghetti top sh string bikini whatever but She probably is low-key a freak because considering how Heavily layered she was in Rocky one those thick ass glasses big ass coat I mean, I get it, it's Philly, it's cold as fuck down there, it's brick, when it gets brick in the season is appropriate, so I understand that. But goddamn, this woman was wrapped up like a fucking burrito almost, of like a clothing burrito, like buried in clothing. 
somehow, some way, Rocky found that attractive, I guess, because she was like low key, charming, whatever. Or he just wanted a normal girl instead of like a street bitch since he's from the streets of Philly and whatever, too. Maybe that's the allurement. I don't know. But given the fact that she had to have all that built up sexual tension and frustration of, you know, I wish someone would peel all these layers off me like I was a goddamn onion and get to the core and suck me like a clit kind of thing. I think by that time she gets all comfy with him. She's pretty much got him all to himself. Rocky's a very lovable character, loyal like a dog. You know, he's like a big old dummy, but like with an extremely dangerous left hand and everything too. I think it's fine. She kind of lets her guard down and with the guard comes down the panties too. So they're extra dripping, soaking wet by the first time they did it. They made the baby and all that stuff too. Surprised they only had one child actually. Knowing Rocky or how he acted, how endearingly dumb he is. I don't believe they even thought of birth control at any point. So, oddly enough, if it was more real life or more made to be realistic, I think it would have ended up with like at least seven kids by the time like he had to retire. And then imagine feeding one kid and an oversized robot, which is also in Rocky IV, the, I forget what the fuck it was called, but Paulie's girlfriend alluded to, the, the robot and shit. Taking care of one kid and a robot is much more convenient and taking care of a whole fucking like minor league softball team at home all the time waiting for you and then any, anytime you get home everybody's like daddy 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 like a stutter like a fucking echo effect you got that nightmare to go to every day on top of that a wife I'm kidding of course but Adrian might have been a low key freak if we think about it that's not a bad thing that's a great thing but then oddly enough you got a freak like that are they more birth control savvy than you'd ever be? And also there's the fact that this is, well, the, the first one was 74, 75, whatever. So I don't know how crazy popular or how frequently used birth control was as far as the plan B pill. I didn't do my history or study up on plan B history. So I apologize. I don't know. Maybe she knew something that we didn't. Maybe she knew how to take better care of herself and do her thing as far as not having the babies. So thank God by the time Rocky Five comes around, they're not broke and down on their luck like they were, obviously in the flick. But on top of that, besides having one annoying ass kid, preteen, whatever, they didn't have seven kids, eight kids, whatever. That's good. So I think Adrian was low key a freak, but she was a smart freak, a safe freak. Safe sex is always a good thing. Enjoy it as much as you have to, especially now in the holidays, pandemic, too much turkey, leftovers, fighting over the leftovers, you kiss and make up afterwards too, and then next thing you know, safe sex is on the on the table, on the platter per se. Enjoy it as much as you have to, but make sure it's safe. We got enough people roaming the earth as is. You know, the dinosaurs became extinct for a reason. I think God the universe, the stars, Buddha, Allah, whoever you believe in, said that's enough for use one day. Because, all right, listen, there weren't millions and billions of dinosaurs. Like, there are billions of people. But there was a good em enough amount of dinosaurs. The big-ass motherfuckers. Even if the biggest one of, all, of them all was a brontosaurus, extra fucking large with a long-ass neck, tiny head, was munching on nothing but plants, you gotta feed that motherfucker. It's gotta feed itself better, yet said. Even, even if it's just munching on greens all day, you gotta consider that's a lot of fucking trees, forests, sisses, sisses, mountains, sides, of course, you can't even mountain, uh, shrubs, bushes, whatever, getting eat up. Excuse me, eaten up. I don't know, ate up, whatever. We'll leave it at that. Grammatically, I failed today too, I'm sorry in advance but that's what I'm saying you feed that big motherfucker like you do and it feeds itself at some point someone has to say okay we gotta stop everybody right there we gotta send some some comets down to the earth and blow these motherfuckers up cause as big as they are and as overpopulated as they are we got too many of them going on but then if dinosaurs got taken out by the comets if there were cavemen around too, 
Did they die? Was there no population at some point on Earth? I don't know. But that's way left field besides the point of Rocky IV today. Adrian was a low-key freak. And she was definitely an advocate for birth control. Because now that I think about it, Rocky didn't have seven kids. Thank God she knew to keep it to one. Thank God for Adrian. What a good woman. I, I wish more women in film and in real life were like Adrian. Maybe a little bit better looking. Adrian wasn't bad looking, but she wasn't like IG model fine or like glamorous looking or whatever. I mean, she had the riches. She had the lap of luxury thanks to Rocky and all that stuff too. But, you know, she, she could have done a little something at least like get some tits put in. You know, maybe, you know, the face wasn't bad. It wasn't drooping or nothing. It was okay. You know, a, a weekend in DR, you know, like Julissa will probably know about. Not you directly, but you know what I mean. You know, the women of all ethnicities go spend a weekend in DR and get some touched up, redone, cut snip, photoshopped, you know, in the physical form and come back all of a sudden brand new. Who this? New IG and all that because, oh, they deleted me at 300,000 followers. I just had to re-up and revamp or whatever. But again, Adrian's a low-key freak. I, I think that's pretty much safe to say. Maybe we'll indulge in that. Everything new, exactly. <laughs> Everything new. But we'll indulge in that if eventually, and if you demand it, Julissa, anyone else watching, listening right now, demands a Rocky V recap, which I might do for Christmas, because just like this one is Rocky IV, Rocky V is unofficially a Christmas film. We'll throw it in there just like that first Die Hard film is that everyone still likes to argue about. I don't get why either. But okay, unofficially a Christmas film. All right. Um, another thing to bother me about the movie not saying it's bad because it is better than five it's in the good to great range would probably be the epic training montage scene which i enjoyed a lot because um th there's the fact that three had the cheat code of it could have been bad it could have been worse also a good good to great mid-range flick i'd say three had the cheat code in the sense of i the tiger who doesn't know that fucking song it's already annoyed the fuck out of us like a year removed from when that movie came out but there's also the fact that mr. <laughs> fuck you george there's also the fact that mr t is the bad guy but charming enough and annoying enough and how he talks, you know, let me let me tell you something, sucker, or whatever, or how he gets at the, he gets it, of all things, he gets at Adrian, the low-key freak, we confirmed already. Adrian, the low-key freak, like, hey, woman, hey, woman, why don't you get with a real man, or whatever. You know, alluding to the black man as a superior-sized cock, BBC, and all that analogy is like, years before we started throwing out BBC like that. Um, there's that. Chief Code, of course, is Eye of the Tiger. You got that, you go into Rocky IV thinking there's gonna be Eye of the Tiger 2, or like the electronic dubstep 80s techno synth remix, probably. I would hope, or that would make more sense if I was alive back then to enjoy it. But again, Rocky IV, born the same year as I was 85, so we're both the same age, I'm just a couple of months older. But instead, we get a very odd mix of song choices in Rocky IV. We get, first off, Living in America by R.I.P. Late, late Great James Brown. Performance-wise, in the flick, epic, sells a song beautifully, makes it seem all over the top, majestic, like another fucking hit for James Brown, years after the fact of, you know, all the classic samples and hip-hop that they took from him, you know, uh, I can't remember any of the names right now, Big Payback and such, you, you know what I mean, though. George probably knows what I mean, because he's a hip-hop head. You know, shout-out to George, too. Thanks for joining the live. Um, but... Performance-wise in the film, the song looks really good. If you listen to the song afterwards by itself, it's mid. It's it's no good. It's like one of his weakest, but still somewhat a hit because it was in a flick of all things, of course. So it got that kind of cheap promotion per se, cheap plug, Betty had said. There's the, I'm trying to think of the fucking other song. Uh, ah, so uh, I would have switched the order of the f of the songs used the one especially for the training montage and there's a scene where he's just in the car driving around thinking about oh my man my man just died 
he just got killed in the ring by a fucking Russian machine and nobody gives a shit because he was retired and removed and he's black of course too so no one really cares at all and it's all wrong and racial tension and all that too if Rocky IV would have came out and ha that happened Rocky would have been cancelled so thank god it came out in the 80s like it did when people you know could take a racist joke laugh if it was funny and go about their day too I miss those days I really miss those days you had a good friend who was of whatever ethnicity you, you pick on them you make jokes but not pick on them bully but pick on them like you make jokes you make fun of lightly each other rip each other per se and it's like you can still shake hands at the end of the day be friends go about your business live your life freely of course now it's like hey sir would you like some black coffee oh what because i'm black you know i got no sweetness in me got no lightness in me no sugar no capability of being like that either you know whatever starbucks but i've canceled starbucks a long time ago because it was like overly expensive gasoline tasting coffee that's that's me though but i'm trying to fucking think of the song though god damn it ah well all right fuck that song i can't remember right now the song i do want to get on and rag is remembering this movie i remember this movie at least when i thought of it as being much better the song i mean excuse me the song they use for the training montage is first off Nowhere near as good in comparison to Eye of the Tiger. There's nothing touching that. Eye of the Tiger was so epic, apparently, they used that in the very opening of Rocky IV. With the credits rolling, the name, the title screen, all that shit too. To build up the tension to, or the uh, illusion of, oh god, this is going to be as epic as 3 was. Which really wasn't 3, I mean, but the song was so good, who wouldn't fucking remember that or like expect that too. But there's a song called uh, Hearts on Fire. That's, that's the name of it. I remember this song apparently in thoughts, remembering if you ask me, oh, have you ever seen Rocky IV? Yeah, oh yeah, Hearts on Fire, whatever the fuck. It sounded a lot better in my thought or in my passive dreams per se than when I actually watched the film again recently and heard this song now after being so far removed from it. Oh shit, this fucking song is terrible. Now the production, the arrangement, the composing of it, all that too, has the makings of a good, catchy little fucking boppy thing. Nowhere near Eye the Tiger, nowhere near as enticing or uplifting or like kind of get you, make you want to get your sweat on like Eye the Tiger is. It's more like uh, trying to build up to like, oh, Rocky grew a full beard, which I can't do. Training in the snow with a fucking bomber jacket on, which uh, lambskin on the collar and shit, boots. Hiking in the snow, lifting logs, and uh, what do you call it? Doing shoulder presses with people in like a horse carriage inside a stable when you could just do it outside. But okay, I get it. You're training. Um, the singer, the vocalist on this song is Tra-ash. Tridash. Terrible. Horrible. What the fuck happened? What were you thinking even doing that shit? Or how does Sylvester Stallone sign off on, of all things, that song being the song for the training montage, which we remember so fondly from every flick. Rocky One has, of course, the instrumental buildup to the fucking first fight with Apollo. Rocky Two has the same instrumental infamous Rocky song playing in the training montage, building up to the rematch with Apollo. Three, Eye the Tiger. That's the fucking anthem. That's the one that defines kind of the whole Rocky franchise. Four, how do you get a fucking weak-ass vocalist like whoever the fuck, which I won't find out or try to even give credit to because he fucking sucks, the singer of Hearts on Fire, to do this shit. I could have sung this song better. Way fucking better. And I got the voice I got. I got no fucking range. This is how I sound all fucking day. And guess what? It only gets worse if I get louder. So I shouldn't do it any louder. I shouldn't project too loudly because then I sound like a fucking dying moose shot in the head waiting to fucking die or be put out of my misery or get taken to fucking Dr. Rocky Mountain Vet, the guy in the, on, the, on the Animal Planet channel with the, with the hippie haircut and the fucking feng shui mustache or whatever you call it too. I could have done it better because I could have hit that fucking range so much better than this asshole could have. You know, uh, uh... No, 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 not that song. I, I, mean, I mean the other song. The other song I was thinking of. But Hearts on Fire. Oh, shit.
put this guy out of his misery. I hope the guy that sang Hearts on Fire, the training montage song for Rocky IV, when he made his way to the debut back in 1985, November 27th specifically, to watch Rocky IV on the big screen and thinking to himself all puffed up, chest walking in there like, I'm going to hear my song on the big screen in these ample theater with surround sound speakers and I got a crowd with me my mom's gonna be so proud and then his shit came on and he finally heard himself in digital Dolby surround sound and heard how fucking trash he was I hope this fucking guy quit the next day because of course t two days after Thanksgiving I get it if you want to celebrate you're too high off the whatever thing they got in the turkey that makes it high it makes you feel like you know, shitting and napping more than usual. I get it. But I hope this guy seriously ended his own music career afterwards. Not his life. I'm not saying that. I don't wish on nobody. But I, I'm wishing at least he ended his musical career life. Because this fucking guy could not sing at all. Heart of fire. It sounds like a fucking monk who tried to fucking infuse some enthusiasm in his own rhythmic chanting and got fucking stopped halfway through but he did it in the shower and thought it sounded fucking good in public and now he put it on the fucking film and of all things Sylvester Stallone approved it somehow that I don't get how he fucking did it because supposedly he directs executive produces overlooks and oversees everything of his franchise that if you know the story he had sold the movie to the studios I think MGM or whatever they didn't want him to be Rocky, obviously, because he said too small, you barely have any acting experience. I think they even wanted Dustin Hoffman to be Rocky originally, which would have been a fucking joke, because what's he going to fucking do? How are you going to believe a Southpaw with that big a fucking nose like Dustin Hoffman shots to him has? I'm not going to lead into it. I'm going to lead into every fucking fight face first with a fucking nose platoon like that. It's an easy target. I'm going to fucking have the worst career ever as a boxer. Who's going to believe that on the fucking movie on top of all things? But he... he reneged on that Rocky I mean Sylvester Stallone he said no I, uh, I can't let you do this unless I'm the lead actor unless I'm the face of the franchise I guess egotistically selfishly enough he did that shit so of course from there goes the whole franchise then of course he's the face of and we have all grown to love Rocky had it been Dustin Hoffman I, yeah I don't even want to think that honestly it would have been so stupid but to think that he's the one the mastermind the genius the brains behind the whole operation as far as Rock E is concerned. And of all things, the fourth one of the franchise, which we don't know that five is coming out five years later, 1990. We don't know six, Rocky Balboa is coming out in 2006, 16 years later after five, uh, 21 years later after fucking four. And then there's Creed one and Creed two, two. And Michael B. Jordan isn't even alive at this point too. How does he decide that this song, which is again, absolute trash, Staten Island trash, word association, the only way I can think of, trash, approves this song to be the training montage song. It's terrible. I would have switched to order with the other song that came before it earlier in the film when he did the music video-esque recapping of like Apollo dying while he's speeding around the Porsche, uh, an extra long route to the tunnel, whichever one he took to get away from everything, and two, uh, there's no easy way out. That would have been the much better song for the training montage, I believe, because even I could hit those notes as the guy was doing, like a very mellow, not so dramatic, there's no easy way out. See, I can kind of hit that. That, was, that wasn't too bad, I think. So I could double as a karaoke singer. I'd probably kill karaoke if I ever did that again. I did it once, that was okay, but you know, I sound like a moose sometimes, a, a moose in the heat or an overly passionate one when I do try to bellow or like hit the vocals and notes. But hopefully pandemic's over and we'll be able to do that in a, in a, in a bigger case scenario so I can really shine and showcase myself like that. But that song is terrible. That's the only low point and the only negative, like bright red, if this is a fucking essay, Rocky IV, I mean, that'd be the one I'd underline in red ink circle in red ink and make a comment on top of that way below the very first part of comment and review in red ink this is trash why did you put that in you could have left that out etc 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 
please see me after class and I want to see big to your parents whichever one you got at home because you obviously are not thinking properly don't have the proper mindset the brain capacity of someone who would have two parents at home you probably got one so whichever the one is that's left at home with you and stuck through it all with you I want to see that parent him or her let's make it happen but Rocky IV at the end of the day too the scariest part of it all Rocky unofficially Rocky IV I mean unofficially is a Christmas movie so is Rocky V we can always talk about Rocky V on another occasion another time let me know in the comments DM me post whatever you gotta do or IG YouTube wherever you gotta get at me at or email to who this is at gmail.com let me know if you want me to do something for Rocky V as well too because that's also an unofficial Christmas movie too I I'd love to go end up with that because I got too many bad memories with Rocky V but to think and probably end it off here um, did Rocky Rocky Balboa potentially in at least in the movie timeline or thinking in that aspect did he end the Cold War before it even possibly started or did he stop a nuclear missile crisis from ever happening did he avert it all did he warm up the cold cold bitter heart of the Soviet Union the USSR by giving that endearing yet so stupidly spoken speech at the very end when he finally beats this Russian bear machine killer super athlete steroid abuse etc etc Drago after Drago said I must break you or I must break you I hope he said it how endearing is a speech from a man from South Philly the character I mean of course when he's addressing a nation a whole Soviet Union Betty had said by and I quote, I actually had to write it down to make sure I get it right because I think he literally said it like this. Uh, you didn't likes me, not too much, but something like that. Grammatically speaking, I'm canceling that guy out. Regardless of the language I speak, I know in my brain, this guy's punchy as Rocky's always been. It's already been four movies worth. He's the champion somehow. He's able to put a sentence together, thank God. That's another thing too. Rocky was so street-esque, Philly-esque with the lingo, the talk or whatever. He'd fucking weave in and out of it by the time three came around. He was able to give speeches and fucking address a whole public as in, I get it endearing as he is. People love Rocky and all that shit. But what happened to fucking one where he could barely put a sentence together without A.O. A.O. use his, hers, whatever, all this, all that. By three, he's able to address a fucking public. By four, he's able to address a whole fucking nation at the very end. Half his face hanging off his fucking face. <laughs> Slurring his speech worse than ever because he got destroyed for 15 rounds. Which, uh, if we remember correctly, this same killer who killed his friend in one and a half rounds. Uh, mind you, Apollo Creed, who was a much better trained, much more physically conditioned, trained everything athlete superstar whatever killed in a round and a half meanwhile a man half his size lacking his skill still tripping himself up i don't give a fuck what three showed you three showed you that he had some footwork he got some rhythm in him thanks to the black man of course thank god for apollo he was still jumping and jiving around like an idiot anyway too trying to make sense of whatever and leaning in with his face to get beaten on for 15 fucking rounds by the same guy who killed his best friend a much better athlete than he was but I don't know Rocky franchise logic how does that guy give a speech to address a whole Soviet Union and somehow still come off endearing enough with that kind of talk I mean listen if he was at least Joe Biden with it Okay, sleepy, drunk, sneaky, leery, sniffing heads on females, Joe Biden too, would come off as endearing potentially as Rocky. You know what? I think he's our Rocky. Presidentially speaking, I think he's our Rocky. He's a big dope. He's better than whatever else we have for these past four years and then soon enough out of the office, whatever, in a couple of months from now, I guess. Better than nothing. 
the lesser of two evils has been said to, but that's politically speaking. I don't even want to get into that. But I, I look at Joe Biden, I, I see a lot of like Rocky just with some white hair and about as punchy as dopey in the head too anyway. But that's fine. How, how you get somebody that says, oh, you, you guys didn't like me too much when I came out here. La, 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 la. That wins over a nation. That hasn't won the crowd over. That stopped the Cold War. Oh, shit. America made it clear. That's it. Sylvester Stallone has insider info. Call Jesse Ventura. Call whoever the fuck you know has insider tips beyond conspiracy theories. Rocky Balboa, Rocky IV, stopped the Cold War from ever happening. He took Russia's big fat fucking button off the launch button. Because they was dangerous. They was like this close. The finger on the button. To like fucking press it. And blow us all the fucking kingdom come. And then Rocky IV came out. It's like, oh, yet. No, no, no. And that's it. Done deal. He saved us. He's a fucking savior. Oh, my God. So this makes Rocky IV not even good. It makes it great now. Oh, shit. It's official now. Thank God for Rocky IV. And thank God for you for watching this, listening to this. Now, of course, let me not discriminate. Let me not... uh. Uh, religiously oppress you God, Buddha, Allah Krishna you know, your mom, whoever you deem to be God in your sense, the universe the cosmos, the angels of history, deep, space nine, the black galaxy whatever you believe in something spectacular, ish was today, Rocky for the focus, good or bad you ask me as I've been speaking long enough for about an hour or so now anyways, I'd say it's good. Even, dare say, great. The music in the film, not so great. I would have had some key words for Sylvester, especially regarding Hearts on Fire, as far as a training montage song. Short, simple, and sweet enough, I would have been like, what the fuck were you thinking? Are you legit Rocky in real life? That punchy in the fucking head, you let this song pass? But okay, whatever. That's besides the point. Thanks for joining me. Something spectacular-ish. An add-on to the podcast already known as Something Spectacular, which you can find on all DSPs. That means iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever the fuck you get the audio version of your podcast from. You know, go ahead and enjoy it right there, too. YouTube version as well is backslash who this is one as well. Please run up the numbers. Please let it be known. That there's the visual version of the podcast as well for you to enjoy. And take in and indulge in as you do the audio format as I've been told and by random people. IG, Twitter and stuff. They randomly hit me up and said, hey, I love what you do. Where can I get more? You got more right there. The YouTube. I told you already. That's what it is. And that's that for today at least. Shout out to everybody that joined me here today at least. Uh, at least who I paid attention enough to see and read your comments. I apologize to anybody else who jumped in. I didn't see you. Uh, Julissa, thank you so much for always joining and being a part of and commenting on everything I do pretty much. Uh, George, or uh, Baby Bletzes, or Baby Bitch Ass Bletzes. You know, it's all love, of course. You know I'm joking. But I haven't heard from you in a long ass time. We need to link up again. Shout out to you and thanks for watching and enjoying and listening. Super Nitro, of course, always checking in. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, yeah. If you like what you saw and you heard, please feel free to hit me up and let me know you want one for Rocky Five, because I'll be glad to do one for Rocky Five, a recap, review, whatever the fuck else, because that just turned 30 years old since it was released in 1990, and we can do our thing there too and recap and reminisce together. All right? Please let me know. Hit me up or if you got to hit me up on. Thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you next time. Oh, don't forget, there is a new episode of Something Spectacular. Link in my bio, episode 48. Happy Hollow Days. And you'll see why if you listen to the episode. And again, most importantly, watch it on YouTube, youtube.com backslash who this is one to. Please watch and enjoy and get at me, however, which way you got to. Thanks for watching.